So as we get more into the adaptive system, you're going to start hearing a lot about B cells and T cells. B cells are also known as B lymphocytes and T cells are also known as T lymphocytes. So a lymphocyte is a type of cell that you've learned about before. It's actually a type of blood cell. And so because these are blood cells, like all other blood cells, they actually originate in the bone marrow. However, T cells get their name because once they've kind of got to a certain place in maturation, they're gonna migrate from the bone marrow to the thymus, which you may remember is that lymphoid organ that kind of overlays the heart, and they're going to complete their maturation there. And that's actually why T lymphocytes or T cells are known as T cells, because it stands for where they're actually developing, which is in the thymus. The other major type of cell that you're gonna start hearing a lot about is, again, what's known as a B lymphocyte or a B cell. B lymphocytes or B cells complete their development in the bone marrow, and that's the reason for their name, B cell or B lymphocyte. A lymphocyte, whether it's a B cell or a T cell, while it's developing, while it's maturing in either the thymus or the bone marrow, has to become capable of doing a couple of different things. So the first thing that we need a lymphocyte that's maturing to do is to become what's known as immunocompetent. Immunocompetent means that that cell is able to recognize its one specific antigen by binding to it. And there's a very unique thing that happens in the thymus for T cells, in the bone marrow for B cells, that allows these cells to be immunocompetent. That is, these cells that are developing sprout on their surfaces a receptor that's kind of a random shape. So if you look at lymphocyte A here, my representation of a lymphocyte that's developing in the thymus, you'll notice it has sprouted a receptor that has kind of a V-shaped um, end on it here. Here's lymphocyte B, just my example of another lymphocyte that's developing. When it becomes immunocompetent, I'm showing it as developing kind of this square-shaped receptor on its end. And then here's another one, lymphocyte C, which I'm saying is specific for tuberculosis bacterium. And when it becomes immunocompetent, it's going to sell a receptor of a different shape. You may notice that this first lymphocyte with kind of this V-shaped receptor end is immunocompetent for flu. And the reason that I say that is because its receptor is of a shape that's going to allow it to bind to flu virus. It's going to recognize flu virus. And when we talk about B cells or T cells and we say that they're recognizing something, they don't do this like you or I would recognize something, which is by seeing it and remembering it. So these cells don't have eyes. When we say that a cell is capable of recognizing an antigen, what that means is it has a receptor that allows it to bind to that antigen like a lock and key. So lymphocyte A here is immunocompetent for flu virus because it has a receptor of a shape that allows it to bind to the flu virus like a lock and key. Over here, we have my example of another lymphocyte. This one is lymphocyte B, and I've said that it's immunocompetent for HPV. And what that means is it has a receptor that's of the correct shape and size to be able to bind to human papillomavirus. This one over here, again, is immunocompetent for tuberculosis bacterium. Here's my little representation of tuberculosis bacterium. Of course, it isn't a blue circle, um, but it has a specific shape, and the receptor that is sprouted on the surface of a lymphocyte that's immunocompetent for tuberculosis bacterium is going to have a shape that allows it to bind tuberculosis bacterium like a lock and key. So once the cell has this receptor of a certain shape that allows it to bind a specific antigen, we consider it to be immunocompetent. I always get the question, so these cells are developing in the thymus, they're developing in the bone marrow, maybe before you ever see flu virus or maybe before you ever see HPV. Maybe you'll never get exposed to HPV, but your body right now has lymphocytes that are specific for all the different kinds of HPV in it. 
The way that this happens is we have hundreds of thousands, even millions of different lymphocytes that are developing in the bone marrow and the thymus. The receptor shape that they sprout is just kind of random, but there's so many of so many different random shapes that we have one for everything that could potentially be out there. If we did not have a receptor for a certain substance, that would mean that we would be unable to it. We wouldn't have any cells that are immunocompetent to it, and that means that we can't have any type of a reaction to it. That's why it's always concerning anytime there's a swine flu or a bird flu, because what that means is this is a strain of the flu that developed in another species and jumped to humans. And if it developed in another species, we have no idea what its shape might be, and that increases the chances that we're not going to have a receptor that's going to be able to bind it. So that's why there's always a panic when we've got swine flu or we've got a new avian flu, because we're just not sure how well the human body is going to be able to react to it. The other thing that a T or B cell has to do as it's developing in the thymus um, or the bone marrow is we have to ensure it's self-tolerant. So with the immunocompetence, remember, it sprouted a receptor of a specific shape that allows it to be able to bind to something like a lock and key. We want to make sure through this second process, through this check on self-tolerance, that what that cell's receptor is able to bind to, like a lock and key, is not your own self-antigens. Because if it is your own self-antigens, it's going to destroy cells that are displaying your self antigens. So what we wanna do in this second process as a T cell or a B cell is maturing and it's becoming a fully functional immune system cell that we can send out into the body to defend the body against microorganisms is look at this self tolerance. And there's a two step process that ensures self tolerance. So the first step in the process is what's known as positive selection. And I wanna walk you through a little bit what's going on with positive selection. So we have a cell here. This would be a cell that's in the thymus specific, specifically. It's an antigen presenting cell. What you're seeing right here is a class one MHC protein. And then sitting right in the middle of that class one MHC protein is a self antigen. What we've got over here, this cell in kind of the turquoiseer is a cell a T cell that's developing, that's working on becoming mature before it gets released into the body. And what I want you to know is this antigen presenting cell here is showing this developing T cell, the self antigen on the class one MHC. And you'll notice this T cell has a receptor that does not allow it to recognize the class one MHC. So again, when we talk about cells being able to recognize something, they can't see it, right, because they don't have eyes. But recognizing means that we need these structures to bind together like a lock and key. And you can see that's definitely not happening here. If that's the case, this cell is a problem. Because if it cannot recognize, if it can't bind to class 1 MHC, that means it has no idea which of all the receptors, which of all the proteins on the surface of a cell of the body is displaying your self antigen. So it cannot recognize self from non-self, and that's a problem. So in this first step of positive selection, if the cell isn't able to recognize the class one MHC, okay, where again, self antigens are displayed, this cell is gonna go through apoptosis, which basically means this cell is gonna die. We can't release it into the body. It's too dangerous because it cannot determine where self antigens are displayed. What we want to happen in positive selection is what you see in this picture here. So again, we've got an antigen presenting cell. It's got a self antigen being displayed on the class one MHC. Here's the cell that's developing in the thymus. It has become immunocompetent. Now we wanna make sure it's self tolerant. And you'll notice it's recognizing that class one MHC in that it's binding to it perfectly like a lock and key. This is a cell that we want so far. We're gonna send this cell on into the negative selection. 
because it can recognize class 1 MHC, which means it knows where to look to see self antigens. So the next step in the process for cells that are capable of recognizing the MHC proteins is what's known as negative selection. What we don't want to happen in negative selection is what you see in this first picture here. So here is our APC. It's got the class 1 protein, MHC. Here's a little self antigen. This is our developing immune system cell. It's able to recognize the class 1 MHC and it's binding to it like a lock and key, but we've got a problem because it's also binding to the self antigen like a lock and key. This is not something that we want because what happens is this cell, if it goes out into the body because it recognizes self antigen and binds to them tightly, is going to start working to destroy cells that are displaying self antigens. So this is not what we want to happen in negative selection and any cell that does this is gonna go through apoptosis. It's going to die because it is not going to be a good immune system cell that's going to not attack and not destroy your own body cells. If you look at this picture down here, so this fourth picture, this is what we want to happen in negative selection. We've got our APC, it's got the class one MHC that it's displaying. Our developing cell recognizes the class one MHC. Again, that means it's binding to it like a lock and key. However, it does not bind like a lock and key to that self antigen. So it's not going to activate against cells that are displaying self antigens. So again, basically what we want to do through this self tolerance process is we want to make sure that our lymphocyte that's developing knows where to look for self antigens so it can recognize one MHC, but we want to make sure it doesn't bind tightly and react against self antigens. So it can recognize, know where they are, but it doesn't react against them. Only about 2% of cells make it through positive and negative selection. 98% either can't recognize class one MHC, so they have no idea where to look for self, or they recognize the class one MHC, but they also recognize the self antigen, and they would react against cells that are displaying um, that self antigen. So 2% of the cells actually make it out into the body to become functioning immune system cells.